right, welcome back to Faithology Today, where we're building faith and destroying doubt. Mark Nathaniel Skelton here, and to God be the glory, we're going to be continuing this series on the historical Jesus Christ. In particular, today's episode is about three historical, reputable sources that are non-Christian that support the existence of the person, Jesus Christ. Isn't that good? So let's go ahead and get started. These three are... Pliny the Younger, Cornelius Tacitus, and Flavius Josephus. Let's go ahead and get started with Pliny the Younger. Give you a little biography about him. So he was born in about 61 AD. His career was, he was a politician and a judge and an author. He had a very close uncle known as Pliny the Elder. That's why he's known as Pliny the Younger. Uh, unfortunately, Pliny the Elder life was claimed in a popular volcano eruption and uh, Pliny the Elder is pretty well known for his scientific abilities. Um, Pliny the Younger by tradition he entered into the Senate in his late in the late 80s so he was about in his 20s and around 110 AD so when he was about 50 he was appointed Imperial Governor of the Roman province in Asia Minor which is now a now modern day Turkey. His career, he penned many letters, epistles about Roman administration history and everyday life in the first century AD. So he lived between the first and second century AD and he wrote a letter, let's zero in on it, in 112 AD to the Roman Emperor Trajan seeking advice on how to handle Christians. It's in this letter where the reality of Christianity and Christ come to life in this letter it's called letter 10 oh yeah once again this is from a lot of this information is from encyclopedia britannica and it's in the public domain so there's no secrets here in letter 10 you can check this out yourself tells us within there he's writing to the emperor on how to deal with christians who basically aren't renouncing their faith in a sense especially as it pertains to trial suspected Christians who appear before him as a result of third-party accusations. Towards the end of the letter, Pliny makes mention of the early church practices that they were doing, and he makes a reference to Christ. That they, and I quote, that they won't, on a stated day, to meet together before it is light and to sing a hymn to Christ as God. Huh. Pretty good. That's a historical figure there. Let's go ahead and talk about Cornelius Tacitus now. Who's this guy? He's a Roman historian, an orator, public official. He lived during the times of 56, was born 56 AD to 120 AD. It's believed that he was born in France or Gaul to a provincial, provincial aristocratic family, upper class. He became a senator, a consul, and eventually a governor of Asia as well. In his career, Tacitus, uh, most well-known works are Germania and the Histories, which basically concerns uh, information regarding Germanic tribes and the Roman Empire, 69 AD to 96 AD. Claimed as one of the greatest historians and was well noted for his writings in the Latin language. Now it's in his work in the annals is relevant to our current discussion. In the annals, book 15, chapter 44, he uh, discusses Nero, if you ever heard about Nero, and how he persecuted and blamed the Christians for the devastating fire of Rome, 64 AD. So the historical events here. And he quotes, book 15, chapter 44, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most um, tortures on a class hated for their abominations called Christians for the populace. Christos, from whom the name had its origin, you know we're talking about Christ there, suffered the extreme penalty, check this out, during the reign of Tiberius, just mentioned in Luke, who was the emperor at the time, at the hands of our procreators. Pro 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 Operators, uh, Pontius Pilate, all right, and a most mischievous suspicion, thus checked for the moment, 
again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome. Now, he states that Christ was put to death by Pontius Pilate, demonstrating an additional independent source that supports the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And last but not least, let's talk about Flavius Josephus. All right, here we got his biography. He was born 37 AD, said to die around 97 AD. And uh, he was born a Jew and raised in Jerusalem and is remembered as the only historian to provide accounts of the great Jewish rebellion. It could be said he lived around the same time as Paul. They, they were different ages, but they lived, there was contemporaries. And he wrote extens extensively about Israel, the life of Jewish nation, and especially during the Roman occupation. Now, in his writings, sources say in his antiquities, he's not only wrote about Christ, but he's wrote about John the Baptist, Pontius Pilate, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin high priest, um, Antipas as well, King Herod. Needless to say, all these individuals are reflected in the Gospels as well. So what does he say about Christ? So in the antiquities of the Jews, he states, now there was about this time Jesus Christ, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man. For he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ Savior. And when Pilate, once again we've got Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at first did not forsake him. For he appeared to them alive again the third day as the divine prophets had foretold these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him and the tribe of Christians so named for him are not extinct at this day. So what we have is three independent sources that are historians and they're reputable and they make mention to Christ and these are outside the gospel narratives but it's so beautiful because everything that they're saying parallels the stories which are in the Gospels and the Bible, such as the crucifixion of Christ, Tiberius being emperor, we have um, Pilate, John the Baptist, all these individuals, okay? So what the, what does that do? What is the point of we sharing this? We're, we're building faith and we're destroying doubt. You can, you can rest assured that the Gospel message is true and Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world and you can put your trust in that. That's a beautiful thing. So... We're going to continue this. I hope this was a blessing to you as it was to me. We're going to, we're going to keep this thing going. So if you like this, make sure you comment or share or subscribe, and you'll get more information like this. So until next time, God bless. Peace.